Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and in this week's video, we're talking about this, low level wind shear. This is actually a video idea by Lee Dickerson, who's a friend and submitted this on uh, Facebook for me to do. And Lee, even though you're an Auburn fan, I'm still gonna do this video for you. So anyways, let's go ahead and get to it. Low level wind shear. So first off, what the heck is wind shear? What am I talking about? Well, wind shear is the sudden change of wind velocity or direction, okay? Wind shear is commonly associated with convective activity. When I say that, I'm talking about thunderstorms, things of that nature. Mountain waves, microbursts, which we're gonna look into uh, quite a bit in this video, and frontal activity. Frontal activity, I'm talking a cold front, warm front. Keep in mind, as these fronts move in, they're almost always bringing a change in wind direction with them. So if you're right there on that frontal line, the wind could be going you know, one way on one side of the airport and another way on the other side of the airport. And that's where we get that shearing wind from. We're talking fronts. But what we're gonna look at in this video is really micro bursts. So take a look at this image here, and this is showing a great image of a microburst. First off, up top, we have our strong downdraft. Now here we are in our nice little 172 just doing a takeoff, and sure enough, that downdraft is just sitting right at the end of that runway, okay? So the downdraft is coming down and causing us to have an increase in headwind, which really, you know, it's no big deal. It's just more wind flowing over our wings. We're generating more lift and everything's fine. We want that nice headwind on takeoff. However, as we enter into our initial climb, we're heading out, we enter into the backside of that downdraft, what's known as the outflow on this side here, and we get an increased tailwind. Well, what happens when we get a tailwind? The, the same reason we don't take off with a tailwind. We lose that lift. There is less, less wind flowing over that wing, thus decreasing our lift. So as you can see in this situation, you literally begin to descend. And you can see how dangerous wind shear, uh, especially in this case of microbursts, can be to any aircraft. I mean, wind shear has been famous for you know airliner crashes you know and if it can do that to a large airliner what do you think is going to happen to you know your tiny 172 or Cherokee 140 or whatever you're flying that day now hopefully you know we're in a position to make that good decision and not go flying when there's things like convective activity out there um, so let's let's talk about that a little bit more how would we even recognize wind shear well there's something called the low level wind shear avoidance system. Now this is at most large airports. When I say large airports, I'm talking about the big class B airports. You won't find this a whole lot at your tiny little class Delta airports. Maybe some do. I haven't run into a whole lot that really do though. Um, so they have the low level wind shear alert system that's based at the airport, which can alert you to that. Um, some aircraft, and when I say some aircraft, I'm talking about the large airliner guys, have uh, a wind shear alert system built in, into their avionics suite. Most um, trainer aircraft will not have something like this. So how we would recognize it is an indicated airspeed variation of 15 knots or more, or vertical speed changes of 500 feet per minute or more. So as we're climbing out, of course, we're diverting our attention inside and outside. And uh, when we're looking inside, we're watching for these airspeed variations. We're watching for these vertical speed variations. So now we know how to recognize it. We know what wind shear is. How the heck am I going to avoid wind shear if I were to encounter it? Well, if you were to encounter wind shear, let's say on takeoff, and takeoff really is probably one of the worst times to encounter wind shear. Well, hopefully you've encountered it before you've rotated. If you haven't rotated, that's simple. You just really abort the takeoff. It's that simple. However, what if we encounter it like in that picture uh, I just showed you a little bit ago on the initial climb out? The first thing you need to do is level your wings. Okay, this is gonna help increase your climb gradient. We know any bit of turn is going to take away from your horizontal component of lift, and you're already losing enough lift because you have that tailwind. So keep those wings level. Maintain your same pitch and avoid any configuration changes. In other words, if you take off with 10 degrees of flaps, leave those 10 degrees of flaps in there until you're out of that wind shear. Also, sometimes um, 
in some aircraft you bring it back the throttle back to what's known as a cruise climb um, you know you, you reach a certain altitude you bring the power back a few hundred rpms man get that thing back there to full power uh, if you were to encounter something uh, like this and avoid those configuration changes on landing it's very simple go around again follow your go around procedure but I would really hold off on any configuration changes the gears down leave it if the flaps are down leave it till you're up and out of this wind shear the thing you need to understand about uh, microbursts and those downdrafts like that is they are very concentrated the reason they're so fast um, you know, so devastating to aircraft is because they are very concentrated uh, bursts of air that's why they're also commonly called micro bursts very concentrated area so you'll be in it and out of it really um, you know before you know it typically they can last you know 15 to 20 seconds again depending on your speed as you're flying through them so just really keep this in mind and wind shear can be anything though we just looked at microbursts and this remember it can be associated with that frontal activity anytime you get that change in wind direction you can be dealing with wind shear so Lee I hope that uh, makes some more sense and really helps you when you're uh, when you're teaching others this because um, um, Lee's a flight instructor himself so um, guys last thing here um, Lee posted this question on Facebook. I hope you're a fan of M0A.com on Facebook. You can go to Facebook.com backslash M0A spelled out. Um, and we can uh, become fans there. You can keep an uh, update on everything and also post me any questions you may have there. So that's all I have for you guys uh, for now. Most importantly, guys, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great week, guys. See ya.